Good morning. It is Dewey's 24 hour readathon day. It starts at 8 a.m. where the organizers are, but for me, that equivalent is 1 p.m. So I've got a bit of time before the readathon officially starts. I'm going to be making my way through some of my graphic novel backlog today. That's what I tend to do for the readathons. It's just quite satisfying to get through quite a few of them in 24 hours. However, realistically, I do have other things I need to do today, unfortunately. Some years I can fully commit to the whole 24 hours, but today I think I'm going to have to help Chris um, paint our decking in the back of our house. Um, it's a rare, bright, sunny, hot day. Spring has suddenly come to the UK, or at least the southwest. So we're taking advantage of the good weather to get some outdoor DIY stuff done. I do also have to visit some cat clients this evening, um, two of them, but I will use that opportunity to make my way through an audiobook for the readathon. In terms of a potential TBR, frankly the pile is too heavy for me to lift up, so we've come down to a floor level, um, and yeah, there's plenty of choice. Um, I've got some non-fiction, I've got biographies, I've got a choose your own adventure kind of storybook, I think. Um, some manga, some some comics, some classic stories, some contemporary. There's a couple of Junji Ito horror stories, sci-fi, fantasy. I think there might be a young adult or few two in there somewhere. And since the sun is shining, hopefully um, I can get outside a bit. Apart from when I was walking to the cat clients, maybe we can do some reading outside. We'll see how it goes. I don't place too much pressure on myself with these readathons. I've got no particular reading goal that I'm trying to hit. And if I manage to do one of the bingos, that'd be great. But I often don't. <laughs> they don't really take part in the Instagram things, particularly because the majority of it happens when I'm asleep, just because the time zone's different. I don't try and stay up all night. I've stayed up a bit later when I've had friends visit to take part, but um, definitely not. An all-nighter. I'm an old lady. I need my sleep. Printed off the bingo. I think most of these are actually going to be doable this year. The only ones I'm not sure about are read at a restaurant, cafe, or coffee shop. I might be able to do that tomorrow morning after I've visited my first cat client, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, read in the bath or shower. I mean, maybe I can put an audio book through the Bluetooth mirror that we have in the wet room so I can listen to a book in the shower. Some things are just like they're probably doable but I'm just not sure yet such as read a new release. I haven't checked the release dates of anything. Probably won't be able to share a reading update or participate in a reading sprint maybe. I'm not sure it depends on time zones and obviously I don't really have social media to share a reading update on. Um, I don't think I'll be able to visit a bookstore or a library just because there are none particularly close to me. And even my roots walking around the cats, I don't think I'm going to be anywhere near a bookstore. I probably won't be able to read a collection just because I am focusing on graphic novels. So that's just the way it is. That one, we'll have to wait and see, hopefully. Hopefully not this one. Then I might have to go to the shop to get a frozen treat and a new beverage to try. But everything else, I think should occur kind of naturally throughout the readathon. Things are officially kicking off and I thought I'd start outdoors, uh, get that bingo square crossed off immediately because although the sun is shining uh, it is quite breezy so not the warmest hence why I put my amazing cat jumper on. We do have some proper outdoor furniture but it's all tucked away for the deck cleaning so I'm just gonna <laughs> prop myself up against the garage wall. It'll be fine. I'm starting off with a non-fiction called The Incredible Nellie Bly, journalist, investigative feminist and philanthropist. I got this in my graphic novel station subscription box. Not the most recent one, but the one before. And yeah, it's all about this very interesting woman. I, all good, let's crack on. I feel like I've heard the name Nellie Bly before, but I've just read the introduction and it turns out she's an investigative journalist. And I've never heard of any of her investigations or the papers she worked for or 
I mean, anything like that. So how, how have I heard her name? Incredible Nelly Bly. I do kind of feel like I want to read more of a traditional non-fiction biography about her now because this skimmed over large sections of her life. I really focused on two main incidences. The first was her time where she she pretended to be insane in order to get institutionalized um, in a mental asylum in New York in the 1880s, 1887. And she was there for 10 days as an undercover investigative journalist and then wrote some very important pieces after she got out and really kind of changed public perception of what it was like inside the institution and also um, forced government to grant extra funding to these severely underfunded public institutions. And then the second thing they focus on is her trip around the world. So this was shortly after Jules Verne published Around the World in 80 Days. And so she did the same trip around the world. Um, she aimed for 75 days and she did it in 73. So she, it was a, you know, a huge sensation that this woman had been able to travel by herself around the world. Um, and I think it was, a bit of, it was a bit of a competition between her and another female journalist. So she became yeah, a sensation and like a fashion icon in this outfit, which is her traveling outfit for um, going around the world. And then there are other sections of her life which just completely skimmed over, um, like she was a war reporter during World War One, and there's really only kind of two pages of information about that, it was very brief, which is why I think maybe a more in-depth biography would be interesting. Weirdly, at the beginning of the book, there's an introduction, <laughs> just two pages of normal text, and it tells you everything that's coming up in the book uh, and actually slightly more detailed than the main graphic novel section I always find it strange for an introduction to do that it's just like just let me read the book don't tell me what's exactly what's going to happen as an introduction and then so what I'm reading graphically is just a repeat of the text section so that's not really to my personal taste but it was still really interesting really good um, really lovely art they're like fashion of the different time periods because this is told in a framing narrative of a fictional 1920s journalism student going to interview elderly Nellie Bly about her life and how it all was. So that's how they kind of explain them why we're only getting little parts of the story is it's these little parts of interview that the student was talking to elderly Nellie about. So book one done. Let's have a look and see which squares of the bingo I can cross off. How many pages what was this? 140. 140, I'll say. So I've read a book under 250 pages. I have read outside. I'd say it was a four star book rather than a five star, so I'm not able to take one off. Uh, start a new book? I mean, yes, yeah, started and finished. Does this count as sharing a reading update? Probably not. It's not a new release, I don't think. Finish a book? Stick to a TBR? Well, I'll cross that off once I've read a few more books. That's it for now. Not bad to have four crossed off already with one book. Let's carry on. So I'm off to the shop. I'm not counting this as my walk, but I am going to get a drink I've never tried before, a frozen treat for Chris as well as me, uh, and some spaghetti, which is what we're having for dinner. So I don't think I'll be ordering takeout. I'm taking the opportunity to start my audiobook. Uh, it is N or M by Agatha Christie. And it's one of the Tommy and Tuppence books, which I really like them. I think they're a cute couple. And the hunter-gatherer returns with a smoothie in a flavour I've never tried before and kefir, which I have not tried in any flavour. I'm very thirsty, so let's uh, I'll give one of those a go. And the frozen treats. 
They're both very thick drinks, so I'm not convinced that either of them will be thirst quenching, but give it a go. That's quite nice. I was a bit worried about the coconut because I'm not a major fan of that flavour, but it's um it's not too bad when it's in juice form. And let's try the kefir, which nicely matches our wall paint. I'm a bit nervous about this because it's like a bioactive whatever's. That was very thick. Mmm, yeah. I thought it might be a bit like yogurt. And I was right. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of that. It's not super cherry flavoured. I was kind of hoping the cherryness would override the yogurtiness. It's definitely not as thirst quenching as the um, smoothie. But it's probably very good for you. In other news, having gone through the publication dates of all my graphic novels, I have selected three which I consider recent releases, even though they're 2023. So we're only four months into 2024, so I don't have any from this year, but I still consider these recent. So anyway, they are Damn Them All, The Faint of Heart, and Everything Is Fine. I think I'm going to read this next because, as well as meeting the requirement for the bingo and the readathon and blah blah blah, it also meets the requirement of um, one month of the buzzword readathon that Books and Lala organises every year. One of the words is everything. There were also six books that met the bingo square of published before 2020. Two of them are the Junji Ito horror manga collections. I'm not super eager to read them. I might give one of them a go, but I'm not really a horror fan. Um, and his artist art style always makes me think it's going to be quite graphic horror. Um, and then there was also a couple of biographies, a classic vintage sci-fi manga, um, and the Sandman prelude volume. Chris has moved our painting <laughs> task forward an hour, so it's 3pm, I've only finished one book, and I'm 5% of the way into my audio book, so I'm going to carry on listening to it whilst we paint the deck. And this will definitely count towards my multitask whilst reading the square on the bingo. until right at the end when Chris was checking his paint pot and he realised that there was a load of sludge in the bottom of it and he reread the instructions and you were supposed to mix the stain before applying it to the decking uh, which he didn't do with either of the pots that we were using and so all that time and effort was essentially wasted and pointless uh, because I mean, it may, might have applied a bit of colour to the wood, but it didn't do anything protective. So he's gone off to get some more, and he'll be applying a proper coat shortly. Whereas I have to go off and feed some cats. I'm about 14% of the way through my audiobook, I think, and I'll probably get at least an hour done on this walk. So I'm off to see a cat called Chloe. She is my 65th cat client, and I've been uh, cat sitting for about two and a half years. So I think that's pretty good. And then after Chloe, I'll go and see Sassy. And then loop back home and make dinner. Back from the Puscats. They were all good. Uh, sweethearts as ever. Time to cook some dinner. Uh, I'm at 37% of my audiobook. It's, uh, as I said, Tommy and Tuppence story. It's in 1940 and they are on the hunt for British Nazis who might be working for the enemy and stuff to do with the fifth column, which I think is espionage, which is, yeah, their kind of speciality. So 
so working for the intelligence service undercover in a small British seaside town to try and find possible agents working at a particular boarding house. One of the agents is N and one of the agents is M. So that's what it's called, N or M. So they've got to dig them out. Time to make spaghetti and meatballs. Just finished having dinner and watched an episode of Fallout so now it's time to get back to reading I'm reading my second book Everything is Fine by Mike Birchall it's a horror graphic novel so we'll see how I get on well I don't know what to make of that <laughs> that was really weird a totalitarian society where everyone has to wear cat head masks and can be and these masks can be remotely controlled by some government authority and make you say something and it's this weird Stepford Wives kind of neighborhood situation where everyone is going around acting normal and happy and it's something to do with their children or lack thereof the mate this main character Maggie figures out a way to stop the mind control with gory consequences this is volume one, so it's a webtoon comic. Um, I don't know if I would buy volume two or not. It's more the sort of thing I would get from the library, I think. So not a five star for my bingo board, but uh, slightly better than I thought it would be, considering it's a horror, horror graphic novel. Yeah, weird, weird horror. Chris brought me a cup of tea and baklava whilst I was reading just now, so that's what that counts as. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have crossed that off until I actually finish reading anyway. I'm no bingos so far, but I think this one is going to be my best bet for one completed. So just have to read a book published before 2020. But if I share a reading update, they'll have that one. And I realised that one of the Junji To books is a, actually a short story collection. So if I can bring myself to read one of them, then I might get that line. Which would be quite gratifying because it doesn't involve using the free space. Which I always find a bit of a cop out. <laughs> Alright, it's time to tick off the read in your pyjamas square. So my lovely teal pyjamas which need to be ironed and then for the bottom half can you see them Siamese cats <laughs> and the books that I am going to take to bed are Firefly River Run and The Sandman Overture so I've got probably about an hour to read these two I chose them because they're not particularly long so I should be able to read them by the time this old lady needs to go to sleep. Good morning. So breakfast time. Then 
got a fair few hours left of the readathon, so finish my croissant, head to Sassy's, then head to a local cafe and read whilst I'm in there, and then I'll probably be back in time for at least one more book. Oh, and I'm listening to NOM whilst I'm walking, obviously. Don't know if I'll finish it though. Sassy's not far enough away for uh, to be enough time to finish the audiobook. Okay, just wanted to give you a little update before I head out in that uh, last night I read Firefly River Run, one of the graphic novels that carries on the Firefly story after the TV show has been long cancelled. Uh, it was okay. So there's two stories within here. One is the actual one about rescuing River. It added essentially no new information that we don't know from the TV show or the, or the um, film. I thought it was going to flesh out the rescue story a bit more. started off optimistically with showing, you know, Simon taking a long time to build up contacts and information on how to go and rescue River. Um, but then the actual rescue itself was just a few pages. The climactic sort of actually grabbing her and going was half a page. And it was only made up of two panels of art, both of which were him throwing a smoke grenade. Uh, and then the next panel is her getting in the cryopod. Like it just completely skips over what should have been a huge chunk of action, which makes me think nobody knows <laughs> the actual story of what happened during those moments. Wasn't shown in the TV show, wasn't fleshed out in the film very much, like a bit. Wasn't fleshed out in here, like, <laughs> who knows. You know, the bad guys are hardly in the rescue scene, they're just like somewhere else. <laughs> And then he grabs her and runs, basically. Um, and then the second story in here is a kind of um, an Ebenezer Scrooge, Three Goes to Christmas retelling, uh, but with Jane as Scrooge. I think I, um, I, I don't know if I read these graphic novels too far apart, or if I've skipped a few or something, but something appears to have happened in the story at that point that I wasn't aware of. I don't know, it just is a bit weak. Um, the three ghosts thing, you know, the story of Scrooge is when he wakes up the next morning, he makes this huge personality change and, you know, changes his life and, every, and you know, fundamental changes like that was this doesn't happen. It's just, just a silly little episode. Um, it was a Christmas special kind of thing. So yeah, I don't know, still not found a five star, which I thought that might be. The book I'm going to read... At the cafe is the Sandman Overture that was published before 2020, so that'll get me that square. Oh, I am wearing my um Serenity t shirt though, it was top of the pile, but also conveniently tied in with that book, which I thought was cute. Right, time to go and see Sassy Cat. <laughs> Alrighty, back from the cafe where I read about a fifth of the Sandman Overture. It's really good. Uh, I've forgotten how beautiful it all is. Um, maybe this will be my five star. And there's some interesting formatting things going on, like this kind of fold out double page. I had a, a massive custody pastry thing and a oat chai latte at the cafe, and that cost me £8.30, <laughs> which by my standards is quite expensive. So I finished this, but I don't think I'll be finishing it. anything else. In terms of the audiobook, I'm 48% of the way through. Maybe if I've got any time left over, I might listen to a bit more of that, but I won't finish it. Though I still count it as majority read during this readathon. I did also send a little reading update to some friends. We have a WhatsApp group uh, that's just for, like my nerdy book friends. Uh, so I'm counting that as my reading update for the Bingo Square. I finished Sandman Overture. I think it's more like a four and a half star rather than a five. I don't know. If, I think just because. I'm always going to prefer the original Sandman books in terms of the actual plot, I think. This overture is all about the big battle that left Dream so tired and drained of energy that he was able to be captured by the magician guy, which starts off the actual Sandman story books. 
I haven't watched the TV show of it yet, but it's on my list. <laughs> but yeah, that's 24 hours pretty much. So let's go and check my bingo sheet. So this was published before 2020. I read in my pyjamas last night. Can't cross that one off, unfortunately. I share, I share a reading update with my friends. That's just a free square. Did read at the local cafe. I have stuck to my TBR the whole time. But that's it. So, have I got any bingo lines? Yes, we can go down here. Um, I wasn't able to participate in any reading sprints because I missed the first one and the second one happened whilst I was asleep. <laughs> uh, for this line. So that's it. Two bingo lines. Both of them using the free space, but oh well. And in terms of the final collecting together my red pile. So we had the incredible Nelly Bly, which I gave four stars. Everything is fine, volume one, which I gave three and a half stars. Suzanne, which I gave 3.75 stars. Firefly, River Run, which I gave three stars. And the Sandman Overture, which I gave four and a half stars. And I've read half of N or M, the audiobook. It's feeling like a kind of three and a half, three point seven five at the moment, um, just because the story is not super captivating. It's one of Agatha Christie's more espionage books rather than murder mystery books, so there's not so much to kind of guess and figure out as you go along, other than you know who is the spy. Although there's no five stars, a pretty good readathon overall. Did any of you do the twenty four hour readathon? There's a, there's another one coming up in October. They run them twice a year. I think some friends of mine want to get together for the October one, so I probably won't film that, unless they agree. But I doubt Tom will want to be filmed, so it's probably not going to happen. If you did the readathon, how many books did you read? Were they good? Did you enjoy yourself? And did you have any five stars? Those elusive five stars that haven't come across yet in these couple of days. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a nice rest of the month. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>